Let's do some hand planting with persistent storage. All right. So in Unity, we created our um, hand planting biome. So we've got two biomes now. We're the one that we use for rules, and we have this other one we're using for hand planting, but we haven't done anything with it yet. Um, now, if we come up here all the way to the top, we moved our persistent vegetation storage uh, script or section up here at the top. And we've got our settings. We have our persistent storage. Remember, that's where when we start planting stuff, it's going to be stored in there, right? It's like a database, a database of trees and where they're located. So it's not planting by rules. It's planting by um, um, like a, a database. And we have our stored vegetation, and it's empty because we haven't planted anything yet, right? Uh, baked vegetation, we'll get to eventually. But what we want to do is go down to paint, and we want to make sure when we start painting our vegetation, Let's make sure we use the right biome, okay? Remember, we want to use our persistent planting biome, and they look nearly identical. So you got to be careful. So until you, until you add some different stuff, they're going to look the same. So we want to make sure we're using the right one. And so we can immediately start to just click on something like this, this tree here. And um, I immediately can pick, well, what do I want my brush to look like? So I can get different size brushes, different shapes. So these ones are a little bit like they are a little softer. I can get some wacky stuff here, like different shapes. I primarily don't use like these weird shaped ones. I just stick to the circular ones, but I, don't know, I can plant the shape of a star, I guess, whatever. Um, but, you know, let's pick, let's say just this one right here. And you can see that every as I move it around, you can see that it's going to show me where I'm going to plant. So these little lines are pointing up, and they they follow like the the terrain uh, direction. And as I move this around, you can see you know where things are going to get planted. And if I scroll down here a little bit, I got some other options. Well, one is again I got this idea of sample distance, which is really going to be. Um, uh, changing the uh, density more or less okay so you can see as I lower this down it gets really dense and then as, as I raise it up if I put it the same as my brush size it pretty much is going to plant one thing at a time okay so I could plant one tree or one rock at a time and as long as I keep these similar to each other it's going to keep it as most of the time it keeps it as one we'll see here that's doing four you just have to play with it there we go uh, back to one again. We can also do ignore height, which means that if we have a rule, now keep in mind as we're planning this, it's going to take um, the characteristics of however I've got these things defined in my rule-based storage. Now you're thinking, wait a minute, I thought we were planning by hand. We are, but as soon as you plan it by hand, it becomes more or less like a database entry, and then our rules don't really apply anymore. So let me show you what I mean here. So this is our broadleaf desktop. And if I come in here to my biome and I go to edit my biome and I come down into my broadleaf desktop and I change this thing to be gigantic, okay? Now I'm gonna come back up here to my persistent storage, select my broadleaf, okay? Which I just adjusted down in my rules and I click on that, it is huge, okay? But how is this different? Well, it's different now because I just planted that. I put an entry in my database saying it's this big, it's huge, just in this location. And if I come back down here into my rules-based planting and I change this, what happens? Absolutely nothing, okay? That's because we are no longer, this is not being planted by rules anymore. It is an entry in our persistent storage. We use the rules to influence how it looked when we planted it, but after we planted it, it's permanent, okay? It can't really be changed. The only way we can change it is if we delete it or just manually change it. So let's come back up here. Oh, let me just show you. Now, if I plant another tree next to it, same tree, but I just changed the size down here in my rules. So now it's adhering to these rules and I get a different size tree. And so let me show you, I can come back up here. And if I go to edit vegetation, it'll tell me in here, insert, control, click, delete, control, shift, click. So I'm gonna do control, shift, click. Ooh, let me back up here a little bit. Let me make sure I have my persistent, I'm broadleaf. 
and now I'm going to control shift and click and I can remove those. So now you get the idea that when I plant with persistent storage, I'm using the rules based on my how I had the tree set up under my biome, but after it's planted, it's more or less permanent. Okay, it's a really important concept to understand. So now let's go back up to my persistent and let's just plant some stuff. Now, normally I'm gonna put some stuff around this little pond here. I could use rules based. I could put like a biomask around here and then a veggie uh, uh, exclude mask here in the middle so it doesn't plant. But I wanna show you guys how to plant with vegetation like permit or per hand storage here. So let's go up. I am, uh, where are my grasses? I do not see my grasses. Oh, that's because I have to paint. <laughs> so I'm here in edit. Oh, things, the only things you can edit are things that you've already painted with, okay? So let me just show you. So I, I painted a couple things here, and if I go to stored vegetation, total item count is zero. Um, so that's, you know, it basically says I, I've deleted everything. So I could clear my vegetation items from storage and start all over. Um, and I'm gonna do that just so I can show you. So I'm gonna clear this from storage, clear. And now you can see that there is nothing in my stored vegetation again, okay? So I've essentially just wiped out my persistent vegetation storage. Um, it's gonna be an important concept. We'll talk more about that later on. But let's go back to paint. And I wanna put a couple rocks around here. Let me see how big this is gonna be. Yeah, and I need to, I'm gonna to have to change my uh, sample distance to be a little tighter. Ooh, that's really, yeah, that's too big. Let me go in here and zoom in just a tad here. Make this just a little bit smaller. Ah, I like that. So let's do, oops, those are too big though. I must have my rock sizes adjusted uh, differently. So let me go back to my edit biome. Uh, which rock was this that I am uh, trying to paint with? Rock 6B. Rock 6A, Rock 6B, um, min max scale. Let me just change this so it's like 0.3. And come back up here, make sure I've got Rock 6B. Let's try this again. Yeah, that's much better. I probably want these a little bit smaller. I think they're, they're a little bit big. And I'm clicking, but you can also just you can click, you could drag and get them really dense if you want, okay? And normally I'd spend a little bit more time making these not so uniform, but then if I come back and I click on this other rock, you can see I can clamp, oops, I wanna come up here and click on this other rock. Don't wanna click the rock into my biome, I wanna click it under my persistent storage. Ooh, that one's way too big, but I'm not gonna, you guys already know how to resize these, I showed you that. But you get the idea now of, of how I can plant. I'm not really happy with the way this looks, and I would not leave it like this, but it's this is to show you guys how to do it. And let's say I want to plant a, I don't want to plant four trees. I want to plant more like one tree. Let's put one tree there. And then I'll just show you guys quickly how to do some like, I can do some grasses as well. So I'm just kind of moving around, putting some grasses in here. This actually doesn't look too horribly bad. I'm not happy with the rock sizes, but you get the idea is now I'm starting to pull these grasses around, maybe a different kind of grass. And remember, uh, I had this option here, it says paint on colliders. I can actually paint on top of things with colliders on them as well. So if I wanted to do that, I don't think I've got the colliders enabled for the rocks. That's why it's not showing up, but I do have, have that option to paint on colliders as well. Now, let's see what this looks like. And now you can see I've got a pond that looks a lot more realistic when it has some rocks and some grasses around it. So it doesn't look too bad.